Hello, students. Would you read with me? It's very short, I promise. I know you're not used to reading things. Everything has to be fast, fast, fast. But it's a short story. Look, it's only one page. Can you stay? Let's read it. My mother's heart. My childhood is a dense fog with little mountain tops poking out here and there in the landscape of my memory. Far away in the distance, one of those peaks rises high and strong and yet vague in everything but the sound of it. The sound is a scream, my mother's scream. My child's eyes do not understand but the shattering of that scream resounds in my world still. A mother bird preparing for her little ones, carefully crafting a cradle for them, has hung herself from the eaves of the house. I hear my mother's heart screaming and my own chest feels it still, tightens around my heart that can't bear the horror of it any more than my mother's could. In those days, it was my mother's distress that bewildered me. Now, it is my own. What can I possibly do with this much agony for the world of misery surrounding me if the tragic suffering of a little bird or even of a helpless insect is capable of making me pound my fists into my brain to make it stop seeing, thinking, feeling. How can I rouse myself from mindlessly rocking my spirit back and forth and going nowhere? I venture forward because I have no other choice. These words that I write become my steps. I force them from me, one at a time, no longer caring what awaits me around the next corner. I choose not to heed, to fear. It can't be worse than being eaten away from the inside out. Suffering surrounds us, lies at our feet. I thought I could hide, but I can't. What is left? I choose friendship. I choose to be with. Let my own skin be wounded. Let the blood of our separate worlds be mingled. Let grievances be anointed with tears and bandaged by kindness. I choose my mother's heart, the heart that had no talent for hiding from the suffering of the innocents. That is her greatest legacy to me and the treasure I hope to leave to my own children. A voice for the voiceless, the beasts and singing birds, guiding with tenderness, small things that have no words.